Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Unique Paths. It is a medium. Let's get started. A robot located at the top left corner of a M by N grid, marked start in the diagram below. The robot can only move either down or right at any point in time. The robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid, marked finish in the diagram below. How many possible unique paths are there? And here we have a seven by three grid. So actually seven is going across and three is going down. M is the number of columns and is the number of rows. So in our first example, we have a three by two grid. We would output three because going from the top left to the bottom right, there are only three total ways to go there. If we go right, right, then down, or right, down, then right, or down right then right. And given a seven by three grid, we would output 28. And this is the grid that we had up here. So for these questions, we should always start with our very, very um, base case and see if we can work our way up from there. So if we just have a one by one grid, what would we output? So that's obviously just one, right? Um, if we had a one by two or a two by one grid, so if we just had these two blocks right here and we wanted to get to this block, we would still output one. There's only one way to get to here. Similarly, down here, there's only one way just going down. Now, if we had a two by two, we wanted to get here. What would our answer be? Well, if we're over here, we know that we can only ever travel down or right. So if I want to get to here, I can only come from the block over left or the one up. And I know from here, we only had one possible way to get to here and one possible way to get to here. So anytime I want to get to here, I know that I can only come from here to here. So I can only come from two total places. And I can actually extend this over to our three by two example. So if I'm over here, I can only come from here or here. Now I know I just calculated a second ago that there are two paths over here. So I know I will have at least two just from the left. Now, how many can I get over here? Well, since this is directly right from our starting point, we can only ever have one straight shot down. So there's still a total of one right here. So this is why I can get two from here, one from here, and that makes a total of three. So if you can see the pattern here, we can only ever come from the top or the left. That means if for any block, I know how many pads there are to the block above it and how many pads there are to the block to the left of it, then I can always find how many pads there are at the block because I simply need to add the one above and the one to the left. And that's going to be my answer. So this is a classic dynamic programming problem. Um, if we just keep continuing this toward whatever our M or N are, then that last block will have our final answer. So let's go ahead and code this up. Uh, first, we want to make a base check if M equals 1 or and N equals 1. So if M and N equal 1, then we want to return 1. If that is not the case, then we want to make our DP array. So DP equals, we're going to start with a list of 1 times it's gonna be times m and then that is gonna be the number of columns and then i want to multiply all the columns by the number of rows so times n this is our dp array and all the blocks in there are initialized to one i want to take a loop so for row in range one length of dp for call in range one length of row. Why am I ranging starting from one? Well, let's take a look here, right? If I want to get to this block from this starting point, I can only ever go down or right. So here, to get to here, there's no possible way I can ever go down. So I can only keep going right. And every single block in this row has a path of one. There's no other way to get to these blocks. 
Similarly, going down that first column, all of these are also one. So the first uh, column and the first row, they're all marked by the value one. And since I initialized my DP array to all be one, I can just start from here. And I, that way I don't really have to worry about going out of bounds either. I can start from here, see what my path is from above to the left and sort here. Then as I move on, I can use these new values that I've calculated to continue calculating further. So now that I'm starting from one and going forward, I'm gonna store DP of row column equals DP of row minus one column plus DP of row column minus one. So this is going from the left and the top to calculate that new value for row column. And once I have filled my entire array out, I just need to return this last value here. So I'm gonna be returning DP minus one, minus one. And this is just accessing the last element in any list. Let's run this code. There is an error. When, oh, this should be a DP of row. Run code. Accepted. Let's submit. And it is accepted. So if you have any questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, I'll see you. <laughs>